So if you've just arrived for the second session, please turn to page three. You're going to write down 35, 25, and 40 percent. Now, there's some key words to determine a person's learning style. This is not personalities. Remember, personalities, that's another program. This is how people process in their brain, input and out, how they learn, how they buy. It's a different program than personalities. So we have visual auditory. Now, the first way to tell what people are are key words. So turn to page three on the key words. We're going to train, you're going to train these people that were not in the class earlier. What is, give me, somebody give me a word that's visual based. What, give me, C. C, write down C. The people that are new, write down C, look, and what else? Show, good. Let's put down, please write down view and clear. Ah, see, that's for the other people that were in the early one. They don't get that. See, there's new words. I always have new words for you. All right? Write down the word picture. Auditories, write down discuss, explain. Now what am I doing? Now I've got the first and the second group hooked in. Said, tell. All right, so what are some auditory words? We got some auditory words on, under uh, kinesthetic. Write down feel. Please write down follow. You didn't write that down before. Write down um, grab, pull. Grab and pull are new. Now, how many people have been in the car business more than 16 years? Raise your hand. When you were taught to sell cars, you were taught to say, Harry, I was. When you come back from a test drive, you were taught to say what word to get the customer inside to a write-up. You were taught to say, follow me. Who was taught that? Raise your hand. I was. Everybody, what's follow? What kind of word is follow? Visual, auditory, kinesthetic. Which one is it? Come on, which one is it? Kinesthetic. We got lucky. We got lucky. What is it? It's the largest category. We got lucky. You come back from a test drive with a kinesthetic person, say, follow me, I'll follow you inside. You come back from a test drive with a visual person, say, I'm not following you anywhere. But if it's like, I got something great to show you inside, wait until you see this, you'll love how it looks. Follow me. One or two properly placed words will get your salespeople to a write-up. I outwrite you, I'll outsell you. So on the bottom part of page three, it says, let's go inside. I've got something great to what? Show or tell. Yes. Next one. Wait until you see or hear. Yeah, there you got it. You'll love how this looks or sounds. Yeah, looks or sounds. Now you make those adjust. Go teach that to your salespeople. You'll end up with more write-ups. I'll outright you, I'll outsell you. Remember, each one of these things you can go back and teach now to your people. And you can use it as well. Now we're on the next page. Next page is a summary page. You can read that tonight. Sorry, sorry, I turned your page for you. It says, I had you write down, have handouts at meetings. How many people have an LCD projector in your training room? Anybody? Some, one person does. Anybody else? You do. Absolutely. You need to have some type of visual components. Next page. Skip page four. It's a summary page. Page five. We went over visuals. Number of visuals. The visual person is number one. Use words precisely. Go to the next page. Page six. Picture the brain. What the heck's that? Okay, something new from the people that are in both classes now. So up here on the board, we've got a picture of the brain. Now the cortex of each, on the bottom part of that page, it says, on the bottom part of that page, the cortex of each hemisphere is divided into four areas called lobes. The frontal lobe is primarily involved in planning and decision making and purposeful behavior. It, re it represents the parietal lobe. Up here represents the kinesthetic part of the body, all kinesthetic. So you've got four areas, one, two, three, four. These two combined are kinesthetic. Why am I teaching you this? Because the back of your eye socket has nerve endings. And the nerve endings in the back of your eye socket are concentrated in three main areas, the top, the middle, and the bottom. Now, there's nerves all along the back of the eye socket, but there's a concentration in these three areas. And your eyes will activate different areas of the brain. Your eyes will activate different areas of the brain. Your name, sir? Greg. Greg, Greg ask me this question. Say, hey, Webb, what kind of car do you, everyone calls me Webb, my last name. Say, hey, Webb, what kind of car do you drive? Uh, as I think of the answer, my eyes go up to the left because when they move up, they fire off the nerves in the bottom of my eye socket, sending signals to the visual, not the kinesthetic, not the auditory, but the visual cortex of my brain and creates pictures. I have pictures inside my head and to activate them, my eyes move up. And that's the second way to tell what a customer is, is by their eye movement. Visual eyes will go up. That's why I had you put your fingers here, not here. Auditories go to the side and kinesthetics go down. So up here on the board, everybody, where do the visual's eyes go? Come on, where do the visual's eyes go? Where do they go? Up, auditories go where? To the side, can says go where? Down. Would you please, opposite the eyeball on page six, put the V-A-K in the right positions. Put the V-A-K right there on the board. Same spot up there on the board. See where the V-A-K is located across from the eyeball? So one more time, visual's eyes go where? Where do they go? 
up. Auditories go where? Side. Can says go where? Down. Has anybody ever taught this to you before? Never put a contract. Let me steal this for a second. Never put a contract in front of a customer down and to the right. Have you ever heard anybody say I'm downright angry? That's where it comes from. You've never heard anybody say I'm downright happy. But if I can get your eyes to go up and to the left, it puts you in a better mood. And you'll buy more. And that's why fast food restaurants put the most profitable items on their menus up and to the left. And that's why the screen's on that side of the room and not on that side of the room. I love teaching this stuff. Thank you. Sorry, I stole your paper. For you. So, up here on the board, would you please uh, turn to page 11? Page 11 which is your manager's summary page, correct? Would you please write on the, uh, the how-to part, would you please write top left advertising? Top left advertising. You will get more bang for your buck when you put your call to action in the top left area. So whenever you're doing any type of ads, oil change, coupon, whatever it is, top left, you want your, write down call to action. Your call to action should always be placed in the top left side of your advertising. Website designs, top left, call to action, top left. <coughs> click, here to call, click here to call through, or if it's a, a, chit, or a chat, whatever it is, top left will give you your highest impact on your advertising dollars. All right. Back a page. Now we're going to go back. We were on page. I'm sorry. I turn your book away. Yeah, go back to, let's get this way. And that's it, page five. We were on page five, and we took a little trip. We went to page, the picture, yeah, we did another loop of thing. Yeah. <laughs> so number one under visual says use visual words. Number two, recognize when talking to visual, their eyes will go up. Number three, kinesthetics. Number, excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. Why did I push so much about the packet in the car? Does that make sense now? Who remembers 1995, 1996, a fundamental change we made in F&I on how to present products and services? We switched over to what? Menus, and what happened? Sales went up immediately. Why? Because before that, I'm telling you about Gap, telling you, telling you, telling you, auditory is the smallest category. As soon as I had VIP, gold, platinum, or whatever it was, the kinesthetics are now involved. How important is having the packet in the certified pre-owned vehicle? Everybody follow me now? How important it is? Because now it's so important, the customer has something in their hand they can look at, and the visual salesperson can remember something. Because the visual salesperson doesn't remember it unless he has it what? He or she has it in their hand. Oh, I love this. The visual salesman comes up to the desk, Comes up to the desk. He's visual. He comes up to the manager. He goes, hey, I need some help with this customer. Can you the manager says, I tell you what. Did we get it? Yeah. Now, what, what kind of, what, what's the salesman? What's the salesman? Come on, what is he? What's V stand for? Okay, everybody, what's, it, what's V stand for? Visual. So the salesman comes up and says, I need some help. And the manager says, I tell you what. Auditory. Go out and tell the customer, I'm desking two deals. And I got a wholesaler on line three. I'm busy. I can't come out. Tell the customer this, explain this to them, and have this conversation. And the visual guy is looking at you going, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that. I got that. Takes two steps, and what happens? Poof, gone. Now he makes something up when he gets out there. Doesn't have a clue what you just what? Said. Forgot to get back to your test score, sir. Visual, auditory, kinesthetic on the test. You scored two high even scores and a lower third one. Brain talk, input, output, how I learn, how I buy, and how I communicate. Is always the same? No, not with you. 30% 30, 30 of the people out there are mismatchers, and that's the auditory out and the visual in. So you're, but you learn better if you see things. Is that correct? Sir? That's right. But you talk, and that's why you just said that's right out loud. Did everybody get that? Everybody, did everybody get that? Did everybody get that? He just said that's right, that's right. He just said it twice. See, and you know where I find that mismatcher, sir, and some of the most successful business people, because they're able to talk the talk, but they're able to act fast. It's a good trait to have. Remember, there is no right or wrong in these traits. It's just what, this is just who we are. Me, you can't tell me a thing. Visual, uh, now, why was this a bit of a challenge? Because you're hardwired in your brain to do one or two, and the third one's a little bit of a stretch. What am I teaching in here today? Flexibility. And here's the reason why. The customers are not adjusting to us. It's our job to what? Come on, what? 
just to them. And who are our customers? Our coworkers, our salespeople. They're as much our customers as the customers are. In other words, if you're coaching somebody and managing, and you have a new hire, a green pea, and he's visual based, and you're going to tell him about what? 3.441 to 1 gear ratio. That means that you have 3.44 turns of the, of the uh, drive shaft to one turn of the axle. If you don't do that visually based and you just tell it to them, psh, they don't get it. You know how I teach volume displacement to a new hire? It's a 2.0 liter engine. You take the four cylinders and you pull the pistons out and you take two liters of Coke and it'll fill it up perfectly. Bang, they got displacement. It's a picture. It's a picture. What's in the top left? See our new location. Call now. Take exit. Visual, auditory, kinesthetic. Do you have the proper wording in your advertising? Who has a CRM tool in your dealership? CRM tool. You're working on it. What are you using? File cards? Could be OK. Could be Outlook. Could be anything. Could be the cloud. What are you guys using? Outlook's fine. When you put your customer in now, put in a visual, auditory, kinesthetic. Have it put it, yeah, absolutely. You know what we have now? I've got dealerships now. They put it right into their DMS. Reynolds, Reynolds, ADP, they can put a drop down merge button, visual auditory kinesthetic. You press the V, what's it do? It changes the wording of the, wording of the letters change. It was a pleasure showing a vehicle. A, pleasure discussing. K, pleasure presenting. Automatically change in the merge document. Now they bring the deal up before the customer goes into F&I. The sales, the F&I manager brings up, sees the guy's visual base. What's he do? Before he comes in his office, he takes the candy bowl out, puts it up with all the screws and nuts in it from the tire, from the tire, tire warranty, changes his office, brings the menu out, and shows more to the, the customer and sells more products and services than F&I. Seven months later, the customer comes in on the service drive in a new car franchise. This is what I'm teaching right now. And, this, and the, the, the service advisor, I teach them the same material. So they pull it up, they see the guy's VIN number, look at his name, they see what well, his visual base. Now they show them the tire bars on the, t on the tire. They show them the wear bar on the tires. And they sell tires that way throughout the whole dealership. That's advanced. What's V stand for? What's A? Oh, wait a minute. What's V stand for? Say it again. What's A? What's K? Can it say tonight? Tonight. Watch television. It's a baseball game, and the announcer says, watch this guy pitch the ball. Hurry's going to be traded. And you take a pad of paper, and you watch television for 10 minutes tonight. As you're watching television, make little tick marks as to the words that you uncover, uncovers kinesthetic, that you hear auditory, or you see people say, what visual, on the TV. Take the, uh, see, uh, watch, excuse me, watch this guy pitch the ball. I heard he's going to be traded. Cooking show. Take the chicken and place it in a pot. Now, in a couple of minutes, I'm going to show you the best way to cut an onion. A lot of people say, this is a healthy way to cook. Take the chicken, place it in a pot. A couple, a couple of minutes, I'm going to show you, the best, show you the best way to cut an onion. A lot of people say, healthy way to cook. I can tell you what show this is. This is 10 minutes of television tonight. I've done this enough. CNN News. The people who write CNN news copy have been trained in NLP. They know to put more kinesthetic words into the news copy to keep the largest audience from turning the channel. If this was a radio ad, what would I have? What would I have more of? Radio ad. Auditory. Uh, people 70 and older, what do they grow up with? Radio. So your seniors are going to be what? More auditory based. What are kids growing up with today? Those numbers are going to switch. They're going to switch. The top and the bottom are going to flip. You're going to end up being 40% visual, 25% auditory, and 35% kinesthetic in about three years. That's going to switch. So as we start to wrap up today's program, you have a homework assignment. Watch, tell, write this down. Write down, watch TV. I'll put it up here on the board. Watch television. TV, 10 minutes. Tick, I call those tick marks. V-A-K. Excellent. Did you guys enjoy today's program? Yeah. We're done. I mean, that's, that moves very quickly. So up here on the board, test three people. Ten minutes, TV, tonight. Why tonight? It's, oh, teach it to somebody. Take this stuff and train it. Start today with it. Three ways to find a person's visual, auditory, kinesthetic. All the visual people are going, cool. There's three ways to tell what a person is. First is words that they use. Second is where their eyes go. And the third is how do they dress. Two guys are walking down the street. One guy's got on a baseball hat, Harry. It's just perfect, perfect brim. Tight sideburns, clean shaven, nice golf shirt tucked neatly into his pants, and $230 sandals. 
Now the guy walking next to him, his hair is a little bit messed up, no shirt on his, no collar on his shirt, and a couple strings hanging off the bottom of his jeans. What's the first guy? Visual based. So how are people's cars going to look when they come in? If they have a trade in, how, what's a, a visual person's desk? Somebody move my, my stapler. Everything has a certain what? Look on their desk. Are we following on this? Their, their hair, every hair. If your hair is messed up and I'm a visual customer, and I'm a visual customer looking at you going, how are you going to take care of my lease? You can't even take care of your hair. Because they judge everything on how things what? Come on, what? I walked into a dealership in Florida as I stepped into the on, onto the patio going into the door. There were these two big planters, dead plants. I'm not talking just died. I'm talking crispy dead. These things have been there a while. What's my visual impression of the deal? Everybody follow me on this? Dirty bathroom. What's the visual customer go? They, don't, they, 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 they can't take care of it. Are you following me on this? Everything has a visual look to it. That's why you have to, can't have cigarette butts on your lot. That's why your cars have to be diamonds. That's why you have to have the packet in the car to help the people who are kinesthetic that want to have something in their hand to give them something. Done properly, that you'll still get them inside. I have a lot of people push back on that saying, I don't want the packet because they can't go. No, no. Done properly, you build value, they'll still come inside. So as we finish up today's program, the main themes were five reasons people buy CPO. One of those things was building trust, identifying the buying styles of our customers, management and commitment plan you have with you. So I hope everybody enjoyed today's program. It was a pleasure being here today. I look forward to seeing you at our next conference, and I want to thank NIADA for having me come in here and speak tonight. I'll be here for another 20 minutes putting stuff together, so if you want to come up and ask me questions, but before we leave, one more time. Everybody put your fingers up like this. Everybody say visual. Ready? Go. Visual. Say auditory. Say kinesthetic. I'm going to leave you with 10 words, two letters to each word, and a lot of speakers finish their shows this way. If it is to be, it is up to me. It's a very simple process. There's an old saying. I'm sorry, your first name? Randy, you can't, there's an old saying. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. What's the third thing? Give it salt. This was two seminars of salt. I want you to walk out of here going, man, I've I got to get back to the dealership. I've got to use this stuff. I'm going to change my advertising. I'm going to do my meetings differently. That's how you should come out of a, a tra seminar like this. To want to go and practice and apply this material. If it is to be, I can't make you do anything. It's 100% up to you. May we all strive to be the best we can be every day. Thanks very much. It's been a pleasure being here. Thank you for watching.